In this video, I'm going to pontificate a bit and tell you about the joys of using short bows in your bow drill fire by friction sets. Maybe I'll convince you to give it a try. My interest in short fire bows began about two and a half years ago during the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was the winter of 2022 and I was starting to work from home for the first time. And I found myself with a little bit of time on my hands and I was kind of bored. And I, I started doing a lot of my uh, uh, fire experiments down in the basement and the backyard around the fire pit. At the time, I was really working quite, quite hard to uh, learn how to do hand drilling better. I was trying to do barehanded hand drilling. And uh, one day I was down in my basement putzing around and I picked up a, uh, a hand drill spindle that I'd been playing with, something much like this. And I had a, a bit of OCD kick in, I suppose. And I was interested in how many rotations I could get, maximum rotations, if I started with the fingertips of one hand and the heel of my palm on the other and I just slowly rolled back and forth. How, what's the maximum number of rotations I can get using a, a hand drill spindle? It turns out that I was able to get, depending upon the diameter of the spindle, I was able to get anywhere between five and uh, six full rotations. This is a pretty skinny spindle. This is about, I'd say it's about five sixteenths of an inch in diameter. It's horse weed. And I can easily get six full rotations from the tip to palm all the way over tip to palm on the other hand. Well, I also noticed that when I was successfully making barehanded hand drill limbers, I was only using maybe one or two full rotations. Usually what I would do is I would float for a little while until I would get the fireboard warmed up and I'd start seeing or smelling smoke. And then I would start doing fast passes down the spindle. And I noticed that I was probably only rotating my spindle one or two times when I was making the ember. So there I had an epiphany. Um, the epiphany, I, I suppose, was that the overall rotation of the spindle was less important than how fast I was rotating it. From a bow drill perspective, what I realized was that the bow stroke doesn't really matter. It's how fast you can bow that really is a factor in making quick embers. And all that, uh, I, I was able to demonstrate mathematically about a year and a half ago in my article on the physics of fire by friction. Some of the more uh, important uh, uh, sort of penultimate relationships in that article demonstrate that bow strength or bow, bow stroke rather, the, the length of the bow, the total rotation that the spindle goes through is utterly irrelevant. It's the average bow speed that is important. So what I realized was at that point that maybe I could get by using shorter bows as long as I was willing to bow quickly. That was the first epiphany the, the first idea that I was having. Another idea that came to me when I uh, was doing my uh, hand drilling was, I'm not an expert hand driller by any means, and once a, a spindle works itself down to maybe 12 to 14 inches, I just can't work with it any longer. And I was, I was taking my used hand drill spindles and putting, in, putting them into my kindling pile and intending to burn them out in the backyard in the fire pit. And I thought that was a real shame because in many cases, these were spindles that were uh, uh, quite useful and I didn't want to didn't throw them away. Well, it occurred to me that maybe I could start cutting them into smaller lengths and I could use them as bow drill spindles. It turns out that it worked quite well. Uh, here is a well-worn little spindle. Uh, this one is, uh, I believe this is goldenrod. I've used... Uh, in my area, I have what I call the, the Fab Five uh, wildflower stalks that are, are appropriate for hand drilling. They're, they're goldenrod, uh, ironweed, horseweed, uh, mullen, and teasel. Those are all found in abundance around here. And I've used them all both for hand drilling and also short pieces of them for um, uh, bow drilling. Well, anyway, that's the origin of my quest towards small bow drill kits and short fire bows. 
the, the epiphany that uh, bow length really is not that important compared to bow speed. Maybe shorter bows would actually work. And then the other realization is that uh, I could use wildflower stalks as uh, bow drill spindles. That's why I started it all. And uh, it's been a really interesting uh, quest since then. Stay tuned for the rest. Before I show you two of my favorite short fire bows, I thought I would first show you some of my smallest um, bow drill kits and some of my shortest fire bows. Um, this first kit is contained in a Life Straw case. I got this case on Amazon for, I don't know, under $10 or so. It's about maybe nine or 10 inches long, a couple inches thick, a couple inches wide. This was my first miniature bow drill kit. And inside is my Thunderhead, um, some goldenrod spindles. I've got several of them. And here is my first miniature fire bow. Let me show it to you. This is a piece of honeysuckle. It's about, uh, let's see, I've made some notes here. It's right about eight inches long, end to end. Uh, I don't attach my bow cords this way much anymore, but at the time I was just kind of wrapping things around the base and finishing off with a bit of a clove hitch. I've got a, a knot tied into the end of my bow cord here that goes into a notch up at the top. And the important, the important part about this bow is that the usable length of the bow, I purposefully set to be as long as my hand. That was the goal. I wanted to see if I could make a bow that was as long as my hand while using wildflower stalks as spindles and see if that would work. Well, this kit worked great. It worked on the very first try and it's worked every time since. Um, this this uh, it was really a fabulous little bow drill kit. I have to say though, it's uh, due to its size, it's it's kind of finicky. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a novelty. It does work, it's reliable, but it's more novelty size than anything else. I don't use it all that much. Later on, about a year ago, I got interested in seeing just how small of a bow drill kit I could make. And I came up with what I believe might be the smallest bow drill kit on earth, depending on how you measure it. Um, inside of this Altoid tin, I've got, I don't want it to all fall out, I've got two little sycamore fireboards. I've got two spindles. This is a horseweed spindle. I've got two of them in here. I've got a uh, my Thunderhead. And I can also put in my fire bow. It, uh, it comes apart in three pieces and I can fold it up and, and put it all in there. I made a little video about this. I'll, I'll put a link to that down in the description. I also made a, a, a video about this first miniature kit. I'll put a link to it down in the description as well. You can see the difference in size. Well, for my ultra miniature uh, bow drill kit, this bow is seven and a half inches long from end to end. Um, this really is novelty sized. This is, this is a little bit difficult to work with. It is reliable, it does make embers. I've made several embers with it, as, as, as I'll, you'll see when you, if, you, if you watch the video that I uh, will post down in the description, but it is a bit finicky. It's, it's a little challenging to work with. It's maybe on the borderline. I haven't been able to make a bow smaller than this that I could re reliably make embers with. This is, this is the bottom line for me. This is the lower bound, I should say. Novelty size. Another small kit that I've had a lot of fun with is this one. This bow is about nine inches long. It's made out of honeysuckle. It's a little over a quarter of an inch in uh, diameter. I made this bow and took it with me to uh, summer camp this year. I let some of my friends play with it 
Uh, several people make successful embers, some struggled a bit. This is on the borderline of what I call novelty size. Like I said, it's about nine inches long. It does take some finesse to make it work. Um, the kit that I took with me to summer camp included this bow, this white pine fireboard, a few little goldenrod spindles, and this little tiny thunderhead. And the reason I made it so small was so that it could fit in the cargo pocket of my scout pants. And I carried this around all week and let people play with it and showed it. Um, like I said, borderline novelty size here. Uh, take some finesse, take some practice to make it work. For, for most practical purposes, I don't suggest making fire bows that small. That's, uh, that's just a little bit too small in most cases. So next thing I want to show you is what I consider my practically sized small fire bows, the stuff that I suggest that you may want to give a try. The next thing I want to do is show you my two current favorite fire bows, both of them pretty short by most standards. This is the first one. This one's made of honeysuckle. Most of my bows these days are made of honeysuckle. It's a, a little under a half inch in diameter. And this one's right at 12 inches long. This one is good for use with wildflower spindles. Uh, and I kind of cut it and optimized it for spindles that are anywhere between 5 16 and 7 16 of an inch in diameter. Um, nominally on the order of 3 8 of an inch. Um, what I did was I, I figured out how long I needed it to be to give me six rotations of a nominally 3 8 of an inch uh, spindle. I added a little bit of extra length so that my spindles wouldn't bottom out at a, a full stroke. And I added a little bit. I, I recessed the holes where I attach my uh, bow cord by half inch from either end, so I had to add that in a little bit. And then I added about another inch or so just to give me a place to hold on to. Overall, this turned out to be 12 inches long. I thought that was fairly optimized, minimized for um, wildflower stalks. This is the real deal, folks. This is not a novelty bow. This is a really highly effective bow. You've seen it in several of my videos over the past year. And in fact, it helped me win a, a little friendly competition last year. Every fall, uh, fire firecrafters gather uh, for an event known as Fall Frenzy. And uh, Fall Frenzy includes, uh, among other things, a series of friendly competitions among firecrafters to test both their scouting and fire making skills. And one of the competitions is to see who can make the most embers in 15 minutes. As far as I know, I won with this very fireboard and this 12 inch bow and has several little roughly 3 8 inch uh, goldenrod spindles. I made 22 embers in 15 minutes. If you do the math, that works out to be something around 41 seconds per ember. And that includes time that I stopped to rest and get some water. Each of my embers was coming probably on the order of 25 to 30 seconds sustained over a period of 15 minutes. As far as I know, I for sure won the adult competition, but I think I made most embers of anybody on site that day. This is a highly effective bow. It's uh, intended for use with um, wildflower stalks, and this is not a novelty item. This is, this is the real deal. This is, a, this is a fabulous bow. It's one of my favorites. My other favorite bow is this one. This one is 16 inches long. I went through the same reasoning to design this one, but my goal was to allow myself a little bit larger spindles, ones that I might make when uh, carving them out of a, uh, out of a tree limb or, or wood. Not, when, I, when I make um, uh, spindles out of wood, I like to make them about the size of my thumb, maybe a little bit smaller. This is an elm spindle. I made it this summer at summer camp. It's right around a half inch in diameter. It's pretty typical for me. Um, 
For reasons you will learn if you read my article on the physics of fire by friction, I like skinny spindles. I may make another video to discuss that in more depth someday. But if I'm, if I'm making wooden spindles, they often end up on the order of anywhere between a half of an inch up to maybe five eighths of an inch. This, this spindle is uh, actually, it's, it's honeysuckle. I made a video about that not long ago, but if I'm not using wildflower stalks, my spindles are about this size. And so what I did was I went through the same reasoning, you know, how long, how long of a bow do I need to give me six rotations for a half inch to five eighths inch diameter spindle, uh, give myself a little bit of extra room so I don't bottom out on full strokes, give myself a little bit extra room to recess my attachment points and give myself a little bit extra room for a handhold. Turned out 16 inches. If you're gonna start with short fire bows, this is what I suggest. I really strongly suggest a 16 inch fire bow as long as you're using half inch spindles or so. This thing is absolutely fabulous. This is probably my go-to uh, bow, general purpose, everyday bow. Um, it's short enough that it'll fit nicely in my, my day pack. I can carry it with me. I, I do like small fire, board, fire boards. Um, everything is highly portable. This is my favorite bow right now. This is my favorite bow. This is my favorite bow. My one foot bow is my favorite for uh, wildflower stalks. This is my favorite general purpose bow. When I get done talking, I'm gonna go outside and, and demonstrate how effective this particular bow is. And I'm gonna probably use my, uh, a red elm kit that I made at summer camp this year, just because it's a, a fairly standard medium density wood material that a lot of firecrafters are familiar with. Before we go outside and make a little fire, I thought I'd show you a couple of my more standard length bows just so I could uh, make a comparison. This is, this is one of my favorite long bows. Uh, it's 27 and a half inches long. It's just a little bit longer than my arm. Um, it's also made of honeysuckle, like a lot of my bows are. It's maybe, I don't know, it's a little bit bigger than a half inch in diameter. Um, this one doesn't get a lot of use. I like this bow. It's lightly curved, it's very lightweight. Um, but it doesn't get a whole lot of use. Here's my 16 inch bow that I dearly love. You can see the difference in length. About the only time I ever pull this bow out is if I'm working with an especially dense wood and I'm having a hard time making embers. I, I, I might pull this out. It's light enough that I can bow quickly with it and I've got enough experience that I can bow quickly and do big full long strokes. But about the only time I ever pull this one out is if I'm working with especially dense woods and I'm struggling to make embers. This one just mostly stays over in the pile of fire making equipment that I've collected over the years. This is my very first ever bow. I made this bow, golly, six or eight years ago. It's enormous. It's way longer than my arm. It's, let's see, I've got some notes written down here. It's 32 inches long. It's more than an inch in diameter. It weighs a little bit over a pound and it's just a bear to manipulate. It's, it's a bear to, to keep flat. And as you're bowing, it tends to get heavy and I would tend to jam it into the dirt. It's a wonder to me now that I ever was able to successfully make uh, uh, fire by friction embers using this big honking bow. I keep it only because, um, you know, I'm gonna give it away to my son or maybe grandchildren someday if they get interested in firecrafting. But this is more of a, I keep it because it was my first than anything else. All the rest of my standard length long bows I have either given away to scouts or I've cut them into pieces and put them into my kindling box. So there you go, folks. Um, my thoughts on short fire bows. And uh, this 16 inch fire bow is the one I like the best. It's the one I recommend you use if uh, you're interested in giving this a try. Let's go outside and uh, demonstrate this one and show you how effective it is to, to make a little fire. Stay tuned. 
Okay, folks, let's give it a try. This is my 16-inch uh, honeysuckle bow. The uh, kit that I'm going to be using is a uh, red or slippery elm. I made this at uh, Boy Scout Summer Camp in June this year. Uh, my spindle is about a half an inch in diameter. And I'm going to be using my favorite limestone thunderhead. Let's give it a go. Looks like a nice big ember. There we go, folks. Short bow drill. Works like a charm. If you haven't given one a try, I really encourage you to do so. You'll love it. Well, that's all for this one, folks. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.